Hello everyone, my name is Nick from uh, Coffee Before Art, and in this episode of C++ Crash Course, we're going to be going over file I.O. So in previous uh, videos, we've gone over, uh, you know, how do we print things out, and then also just making some variables, maybe even arrays, and having them local to the program. But a lot of times we have data that's not local to the program. We have data that, you know, we need to use as an input. And so we're going to look at that today. So let's go ahead and get started. Here we have a couple different files today. Uh, two of them will be input text files, and then we'll have a third that's an output text file. So firstly, we're going to be reading in two different uh, matrices. So here we have this matrix1.txt. So it just has a simple three by three matrix in it. Then we have matrix2.txt. Now this is another way that uh, you can represent a matrix. A lot of times when you have input files like this, you'll generally have you know some hints or some other useful information for reading the data. So uh, here we're just assuming that the first thing that we read in will be the dimensions of a square matrix. So in this case, it's a three by three matrix. So we'll have this three up here, and then we'll have our three by three matrix. And then finally, uh, we'll use this uh, matrix three.txt as our output. And right now it has some, you know, the, the solution to matrix multiplication in it, but we'll see how we can say empty the contents of this file or overwrite this file. Um, with our result that we calculate. So let's go ahead and open up the actual C++ code. Oop, it's already open. Here we go. So a couple things that we're going to do. We'll go ahead and use uh, fstream. So this is this uh, utility that we can uh, actually start reading uh, from files and writing to files. And we'll see that there's a couple different ways you could do this. You could use uh, iStream or O stream for you know an input stream or O stream for an output stream. F stream kind of combines the both uh, combines both of those things together. So for the sake of just you know conciseness, we'll go ahead and just use F stream here. But then we have just a function that will print out uh, a matrix. We're going ahead and uh, we're going to use um, a standard lib, uh, which is actually uh, also in uh, the language C, we use that for some memory allocation. And then we'll use bit set just to, uh, just to help us print out some, some useful things related to fstream. So then we have, a small, uh, we have a small function right here that just computes matrix multiplication. So this will actually compute matrix multiplication that we want to write out. And then here we have our main function. So we're going to have a different signature for a main function. So usually we just used int main with you know, nothing in it. But there's a second way that we can write a main function with uh, or a second signature. And that's with this int argc char pointer uh, argv array. So basically what this is, is it uh, argc is going to be the number of command line arguments that you're passing in. And then argv is going to be an array containing pointers to those arguments as strings. So in this case, uh, argc will be, uh, there's always implicitly one argument to your program, and that's going to be your program name. So uh, the first thing in there is always your program name. And then after that, so the rest of argv will be filled with, if you pass in a file name, it'll be positionally in there after that. So if our, uh, so if argv of zero, which is the first element, is going to be the file name of, of this program. So it would be, say, uh, this file is called read write uh, file.cpp. That will be the zeroth element. So the first element will be, say, the first file we pass in. The second element will be the second file we pass in, and so on. Now, in order to start reading a file, we need to first have a file object, and we do that just like this. So we'll start out by just having fstream file one. Now, for right now, it this can't do anything. It's not pointed to, or it, it doesn't know about any locations of any files. It's just kind of there. So we need to kind of initialize that. And the way we kind of initialize is we call open. So we open and we give it a file, and then we have basically the ability to kind of point to that file and open it up just like we would if we, you know, say double clicked on a file and it opened. Uh, 
when, when we write code, we need to make sure we do that as well. So in this case, we have a lot of different ways we can open a file and we use them using this, uh, this IO stream or IOS. Uh, and then we can open it either as APP, which stands for append, which means that uh, this is if we're writing a file. When we open it uh, using append, that means uh, we don't delete any contents of a file. Whatever we write will be after the last line in the file. Then we have ATE. Now this is specifically if we want to open a file and then seek to the end of the file. So this is where we can still move around in the file. Uh, unlike append, append will always go to the end. Uh, uh, but when we do ATE, that just opens it at the end of the file, but we can still move around. Then we have in, so this is for uh, reading a file, if we want to get use of files and input. We have out, if we want to write a file. Now route, uh, write uh, implicitly does a couple things. So uh, we'll go ahead and cover uh, the last thing that it does, or the last way of opening files, which is this trunk stands for truncate, this empties the contents of a file. But it's important to know that these things have some implicit uh, flags as well. So in this case, say we want to write a file, so out. So if we open a file with out, implicitly it will truncate a file. So if you open a file as out, it will actually empty the contents of that file. And then it will also automatically do append as well. So uh, some of these flags, especially like out, will do some implicit things as well. Now, what if we want to say read and write from a file? So as we'll kind of see, these just relate to bits in one bit, uh, a bit vector. So we'll print it out using this bit set, where we'll turn this into just a line of individual bits that are either be one or zero. And so if we want to say read and write a file, we can open it just like this. So we do a bitwise or operation. That means that every single bit will be compared and they'll do the logical or operation. So if there's a two ones or a one and a zero, uh, the, the result will be a one. And if it's all zeros, it'll be zero. So in this case, because each of these flags, trunk, out, in, eight, and uh, app for append, uh, because these all represent a single bit, then we can combine multi multiple of these flags together. So we'll go ahead and do that. And so it will, we do that just with this bitwise or, and then we'll go ahead and print these out. And then next, what we'll do is we'll actually open the file. So this will give us kind of a handle to kind of, uh, look at the file and we're, we'll open it for reading because we want to read in a matrix. So here we'll do a little bit of uh, something we haven't really seen before. And so this is um, with allocating memory. So because we're going to need an array and we don't necessarily know how large the array has to be, uh, a lot of times we need to uh, allocate uh, extra memory. And so there's, we can either do that uh, from the stack or from the heap. We'll go into what stack and heap are um, in another video. But for right now, what we can basically do is our first file, we just have a matrix in it. So in these cases, we'll just assume we know the size of the matrix. So we'll say, say n is equal to three. Then we'll allocate, because it's a three by three matrix, we need three times three elements. And then how much space we actually need is we need to be able to store three by three or nine integers. So we also need to save the size of an integer. So this size of will give us the size in bytes. So this should be three times three times four. And then to actually get uh, a pointer to the, the to allocated memory, in this case, we'll call malloc from the standard library. Malloc will give us whatever when we call it with say bytes. It will give us a pointer to a specific region of memory that has enough space for. In this case, it will be uh, nine times four or uh, thirty-six bytes of memory, but it will return it as a void pointer. Now a void pointer is just a pointer that can point to anything. So we'll go ahead and cast it as an integer pointer because this is a matrix, a matrix of integers. So to actually read um, from that file, what we'll do is we've already opened the file. 
So we'll iterate over all the elements of the matrix. So for every row, this will be this i to i less than n, i plus plus. Then for every element in that row, we'll read in each element. So j equals 0, j less than n, j plus plus. And in order to read from the file, uh, just kind of like we have with C out, where we have the uh, two less than symbols, if you want to go the other direction with data and read in, uh, we use the two greater than symbols. So from the file, we're going to take an input, and whatever that input is, we're going to store it in here in this uh, in this array. Now, the way we index this array, we're doing it based upon some big row major order uh, type thing, uh, or this row major order array. So basically, uh, when you get memory, your memory isn't two-dimensional. Your memory you can think of as being flat. So in order to kind of simulate having a two-dimensional matrix, you need to have some kind of, you know, base and offset. So our base will be, so every element will be this J component. So with every single row we go across, but then every time we go to a new row, we've got to jump over those elements. So that's what this I times N is. So when we move to say the first row, so for the case of the the, uh, the first row in the matrix, i is 0, so we fill up spots 0 through 3 in memory. Then in the second row, we need to start at 4, so i becomes 1. It will be 1 times 3 plus, you know, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3. So it'll be 0, or sorry, 0, 1, 2, th uh, 0, 1, 2 in memory will be the first row. Then uh, 3, 4, 5 will be the second row and then uh, six, seven, eight will be the third row. And then because we're reading into an integer, uh, fstream is kind of smart. And so what ends up happening is that it will get rid of all the extra spaces and return characters in there, so all the white space. So it won't actually read in. Uh, so we had spaces between our elements. We didn't just have them all jumbled together. So it looked kind of like, you know, three or four, five, six. So it won't read in this blank space as a character. What it will do is it will just read in what it sees as an integer. And so we don't need to worry about how it implements that. We just need to know that, hey, it works for us. Unless we want to write our own version of fstream. So in this case, you could do this with floats. You could do this with doubles. Uh, it, all, it works the same. Uh, we'll talk another time about how we do this with, say, strings. But for now, we're just considered with working with data. So then, after we're done, it's always good to close a file. You don't want to leave these kind of dangling around. So then we'll go ahead and print out our first matrix. We'll open up our second matrix as read-only. This time, what we'll end up doing is we'll read in that first kind of hint that that file has of what the dimensions of the matrix are. And we'll use that as our dimension that we allocate memory for. Uh, so we read in n, and then we use that to calculate how much space we need to allocate. We make a new array and allocate the space for that array, and then we read in. Now it's important to know that when we read in, uh, where the cursor is or where we're basically reading in from progresses forward every single time. So when we read in, say, one integer, it moves on and it finds the next automatically. We don't need to explicitly tell it to you know read forward it does that for us so if we read in say an element that's if we have a line in our matrix that goes one two three after we do that file greater than greater than into the matrix what it does is it reads in one and then it proceeds on to the next element we don't need to like i said manually progress it and then we'll go ahead and we'll uh, close that file as well and we'll print out that matrix. Then we'll do allocation one more time using malloc. And uh, then we'll go ahead and call our matrix multiplication algorithm. Now we want to write. So this time we'll go ahead and open up fstream, or we'll, we'll make another uh, file object, or we'll open up this third file, this time for writing, so out, output. Then for every single element, we'll go ahead and write to the file then uh, between iterations of this outer loop, we'll write a new line because the outer loop represents different rows in the matrix. So between each row, we want to move to a new line. 
uh, and then we'll go ahead and close the file and we will exit. So that will go ahead and do it. Let's go ahead and uh, compile this. So G++ O read write uh, read write file.cpp or read write file and then our input will be read write file.cpp no errors so this time remember we're passing in files so we're going to call read write file we'll read in matrix 1.txt we'll read in matrix 2.txt and then we'll write to matrix 3.txt remember uh, those are positionally going to be elements 1 2 and 3 in that uh, in that argv uh, array that uh, gets taken from the command line, so from main when it's int argc char pointer array argv. So the zeroth element will be the program name, and then this will be one, two, and three in that array. So that's what will when we call open uh, to a, a file, that's what we'll go ahead and use as the uh, as the first argument to open. So let's go ahead and see what happens. Okay, so here we have the flags getting printed out. So for things like append and open and input, so we see that they represent, you know, individually, a unique bit within all of these, uh, uh, within this big long line of things. And then if we do the uh, logical, or, the, or sorry, not the logical, the bitwise or operation, we can combine them. So in this case, we combine these two together, which are input and output. And when we do that, they just, you know, they get put side by side. So a, a one here and a zero here is a one, and then a one here and a zero here, yeah, is a one as well. So it ends up being this one, one, zero, zero, zero. Then we'll go ahead and read in our first matrix. Then we'll read in our second matrix. And then I went ahead and I said that we wrote to that output matrix. So we can go ahead and open up matrix three dot txt. So here we see that it did not just write uh, another copy of the matrix below this. It cleared the file and I wrote it again. In fact, we can actually, let's actually delete everything. And let's just say, this is a test. And so let's run it again and see what happens. Okay, so let's open up matrix three again. So there we go, we see that it clears the file. So uh, in the case of output, it will truncate the file, clear it, and then it will go ahead and do the writing in the way that it writes is through a pinned. So every single new write will be um, after, or it'll start at the end of the file. So that's going to do it for today. That's our read write uh, example using fstream. As always, all the code can be found on github.com slash coffee before arch. Then if we go to C++ Crash Course, we go down here, there'll be links to the YouTube videos as soon as they're posted. So we went through readwritefile.cpp. Here's the code for today. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. And otherwise, hope you have a nice day.